Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today we have Senator Bob Menendez, who has around a 30% approval rating as a Democrat from the state of New Jersey. I'm pretty sure most of you know who he is, versus, of course, the incumbent president, Donald Trump. So before I actually go right into this video, I wanted to know right from you guys, do you guys want me to do a video where pretty much I only shade things in based off the safe region, meaning it's going to be solid blue and solid red at the end of the map in every single state? Or would you rather me do safe, likely leaning and toss-up states where I could show states like Virginia as lean red and states like Maryland as lean blue. Obviously, that's not going to happen, but just for an example. So um, I'd like to hear from you guys down below. But then after I clear this map, we're going to go right into the video. So as usual, uh, today I'm going to be actually using the uh, save and toss up only, probably not the independent um, one for right now because we're not going to be covering many swing states, considering that Bob Menendez is probably one of the worst Democrats uh, that the Democrats could put up in 2020. Probably not as bad as you know, Pelosi or other type of Democrats, but again, pretty bad um, in my opinion. So again, we have Senator Bob Menendez who comes from the state of New Jersey. And when it comes down to it, I'm not going to see New Jersey go red in this prediction. I understand his approval rating is below 40%, but also keep in mind the firm opposition towards the president. When it comes down to other Democrats, people like Joe Manchin in West Virginia, he has around a 40%, 42% approval rating. It seems a lot more likely that a Democrat like Joe Manchin, or actually it would have to be Joe Manchin, could win in West Virginia because he, has, he is known statewide. And also, he isn't really that hated by the people in his um, state. Donald Trump is probably hated more than Bob Menendez. Donald Trump's approval rating is higher than Bob Menendez's approval rating, but also when it comes down to a presidential election, we're not going to see New Jersey flip, and we're not going to see it go red, especially with that many Democrats on the Democratic side that are probably still going to vote and re-elect Bob Menendez when it comes down to 2018, even though only 32% of them approve of them. It's like what we see in some other states. We see states like Utah, where Trump has around 46, 47% approval rating, but it's probably going to vote for him by around 30%. Another Another state, for example, we go over to the state of Montana. Donald Trump currently has a positive 8% approval rating, meaning 8% more of people approve of him than disapprove of him. But still, he's probably going to win in there by larger than a 20% margin. So keep that in mind. You're not always going to lose voters just because they don't necessarily approve of what you're doing as of right now. So that was probably the state that we're going to talk about for the longest time. New Jersey goes into the Democratic column. And the reason why I talked about the leaning and likely is because I could have characterized New Jersey as a lean blue state. But right now, I do not like how that looks on a map. But if you guys think it'll be more, uh, I guess, informational, then of course, please comment that down below. So I finish off the West Coast, we're going to go right up into uh, the safe states that are still going to be safe, regardless of who the Democratic nominee is, uh, Connecticut and Delaware and Rhode Island could get a little bit closer, but they're not going to go red. 182 electoral votes for Bob Menendez and zero for Trump for right now. Um, all the safe states I'm going to start filling in right now. Um, pretty much a number of these typical conservative states like Texas, Arizona, and Georgia, which got a little bit closer in 2016 than usual, are probably going to be safe. Bob Menendez is not going to be a popular figure when we look at him nationwide. All of his scandals are going to follow him, and even though many of them, uh, you know, they taken away from him, said that he's guilt, uh, not guilty, innocent from multiple charges, especially with corruption, which is something that the American people hated back in 2016, as you saw the electoral map with Hillary Clinton. Having corrupt members of the Democratic Party is starting to become a stereotype, and especially if the Democrats do nominate someone like Bob Menendez, it would just uh, solidify all the, I guess, um, accusations against the Democratic Party that they are a corrupt party. So this would not be a good move for Democrats, number one. And even though um, it seems like he has been cleared of all charges, the same thing happened to Hillary Clinton. They could not you know, arrest her. They could not uh, prosecute her for anything. And even though millions of dollars were spent in the investigation, nothing came of it. Benghazi, the email scandal, everything against Hillary Clinton, yet no action was taken. But the American people did believe it to be true, even though the lawmakers um, had said she was innocent or, you know, nothing would come of it. But a lot of the American people perceived it in a different way. As soon as you have that one stain on your name, it's probably going to follow you for a while. And it's not just, um, you know, even if you are cleared from it, Again, it's still going to follow you. So New Mexico, I still see as a state that goes blue. Bob Menendez is not going to be a popular figure whatsoever. So Iowa and Iowa, Iowa and Ohio, I think I combined the names there for a second, and North Carolina, all go to Donald Trump. These are typically Republican states based on what we saw in 2016, and especially what we see in Senate and governor elections in a number of these states, especially North Carolina, more Republican than Ohio and Iowa. But Iowa and Ohio are pretty much closer than North Carolina in presidential elections or more lenient towards the Democrats in presidential elections. But now 
we're starting to see a little bit of a draw away from the Democratic Party towards Donald Trump. I'm not saying these states are safe Republican. They're just safe Trump states. There's a difference. So 121 electoral votes are currently, I guess, too close to call or they haven't been characterized yet. Up in the Northeast, that second district is still going to go for Trump, but that first district is still going to remain in the Democratic column. And now we are starting to re reach some more contested races. We go over to Florida. Donald Trump would still likely carry the state of Florida, especially with a number of scandals following Bob Menendez. And he's not going to, again, be the most popular figure in the United States. The Democrats need someone who can win the Rust Belt. Bob Menendez is not that guy. He comes from a state like New Jersey. And if he did not have any scandals, you could make an argument for him winning in the Rust Belt. Right now, it does not seem like he's going to be able to appeal to the white working class, number one. And even though he lives right next to one of those key states that gave Trump a victory in 2016, he's probably not going to be able to appeal to them uh, the same way other Democrats like Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, or some Democrats from that area, such as Bob Casey um, or Connor Lamb, who I'm going to be doing in another video pretty soon that's going to be out today as well. But again, Bob Menendez is probably not going to carry the Rust Belt. So now Trump has been reelected president, and I've given him all the states that he won back in 2016, along with the main second district. The state of Virginia, that one I still see narrowly remaining in the Democratic column. As crazy as it sounds, Bob Menendez probably wouldn't lose the state of Virginia. The state of Minnesota would likely go before the state of Virginia, which you're going to actually see right now. I do not see a Bob Menendez victory in the state of Minnesota. Right now, Donald Trump is probably um, one of the better... Uh, candidates on the Republican side, especially when it comes down to the Rust Belt. When it comes down to people like Nikki Haley, she could win in some areas like Virginia or Colorado or Nevada where Donald Trump could not, or Donald Trump would need a very bad Democratic nominee to win against, whereas Nikki Haley could do it against someone like um, Kamala Harris or other type of Democrats. Bob Menendez currently has 201 electoral votes, and he's probably going to get a little bit more than that, but Donald Trump is also going to expand his margin. So here's where uh, Trump will likely do it. I understand Bob Menendez is a Hispanic member of Congress. He's, I believe he's one of four senators that are Hispanic, but Nevada, I again, just because you are Hispanic does not mean you're going to get out that voting base extremely well. He can do it in New Jersey. He could possibly do it in Virginia. When it comes down to a couple other states, sure, New Mexico maybe only because it is a Democratic state. But Nevada, keep in mind, Donald Trump lost this by less than 2%. His approval rating here is pretty good for being a Clinton state in 2016. Um, not the best, obviously, but um, it's not the best in any of these states except for states like Alabama or Mississippi. And that pretty much just goes to show the firm opposition to the president nationwide, not just in these swing states. Nevada, I narrowly see going to the president only because Bob Menendez would be plagued with a number of scandals. And also, it wouldn't be his entire campaign would not be beneficial or be perceived as beneficial to Hispanic or Latino voters. And when it comes down to it, we're probably going to see a narrow Donald Trump victory in a state that he narrowly lost in 2016, especially if he's winning states like Minnesota and winning Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania all over again. But Colorado, again, another one of those Democratic states, I believe Hillary Clinton won it by less than 5 percent, but around 5 percent narrowly going into the Democratic column, giving Bob Menendez 210 electoral votes. And we go over to the state of New Hampshire. That one narrowly goes to Donald Trump um, up in the state of Maine, Maine at large. That was the first time I've seen Maine at large go in a while, but Maine at large going to Donald Trump. So our final electoral map finishes off at 328 electoral votes for Donald Trump and 210 for Senator Bob Menendez from New Jersey. We're going to keep an eye out for his Senate race soon. I'm actually going to do, possibly do an analysis either tonight or tomorrow for his Senate race there. Um, just keep in mind that this is still a Democratic state, which is why New Jersey is painted blue in this presidential election prediction. Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I will see you all tomorrow.